you've got a lot to do. Wouldn't it be nice to have a little less on your mind? I'd Bailey can take the pressure off your day-to-day -day accounting, taxes, data issues, and other business needs. What inspires you inspires us. This is the Art of Dental Finance and Management podcast brought to you by Art Wiederman, CPA with Eid Bailey. Whether it's taxes and investing or planning wisely, Art is the expert to make your dental practice profitable. At Eid Bailey, what inspires you inspires us. We provide a suite of accounting and advisory services dedicated to the total care of your practice. Visit our website to access our tools and resources tailored for dentists, eidbailey.com slash dentist. That's E-I-D-E-B-A-I-L-L-Y dot com slash dentist. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Art Wiederman, CPA, and Ide Bailey, LLP are not rendering legal, accounting, or other professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information or opinions shared. If you have questions and or feedback, make sure to email Art over at awiederman at idebailey.com. That's A-W-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N at E-I-D-E-B-A-I-L-L-Y dot com. You can also give Art a call at 657-279-3243. Without further delay, here's your host, Dental CPA, Art Wiederman. And hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very special edition of the Art of Dental Finance and Management podcast with Art Wiederman, CPA. I'm your host, Art Wiederman, and I am a dental division director for the CPA firm of Ide Bailey, and I work out of Southern California. And uh, as I've told you guys, we're coming up on five years of this podcast. And again, I got to thank everybody for their, uh, you know, their listener listenership. I guess that's a word, listenership. Uh, we have thousands of people that download our podcasts every month. And one of the great things about doing this work is I get to talk to, first of all, the many, many friends I've made over 39 years as a dental CPA, and, and some of them are just iconic. And today we have an icon in dentistry. Lo Lois Banta is not just a dental coach and consultant. I mean, she's, she's known all over the country. She's spoken all over the country. She is a, a well-known author and we're going to talk with Lois today. Uh, Amy, I, I said to Lois, what do you want to talk about? Usually I dictate what my guests are going to talk about. With Lois, I don't dictate anything. We just say, Lois, what are you talking about? And we, we kind of settled on a couple of things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about one of the topics of her book. Uh, one of her many books is Secrets to Minimizing Open Time, a Toolkit for Dental Teams and Canceling Appointments and What's Important There. But I also want to talk and we haven't really talked about this, and this is something that Lois does a lot of really good work in, is how to hold a team retreat. Now, that, that means taking the team outside of the office, or, or maybe not. We'll find out what Lois says about that. And how does that all work and what's the benefit? So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, when I get to Lois, I want to first thank my wonderful, wonderful marketing partner, Decisions in Dentistry Magazine. Uh, Decisions in Dentistry magazine is is the top dental clinical magazine in the world. Um, you can get 140 continuing education courses for a very, very reasonable price. Uh, go to their website. You can get to all my podcasts from the website, www.decisionsindentistry.com. Uh, I want to touch on just one other thing that you need to be aware of. And we've been talking about, folks, the employee retention tax credit. And I guarantee you, if you are on social media or if you watch television, which is probably 99.9% .9 of all of you, you are seeing multiple advertisements for lots of different companies. Uh, I mean, I must get 20 a day on my Instagram feed of the ERTC. And the IRS has even now gone out on uh, to the public and said, folks, uh, we're coming after the cheaters. And there's billions and billions of dollars of flat out theft from the federal government from this program from people that have just claimed this credit illegally. So I want to warn you that if you feel like maybe you claimed this credit and you went to one of these companies and it didn't really make sense, 
you can give the money back. So I just want you to be careful about this and be careful about solicitations of people that say, um, because you drove into your office on Tuesday, you qualify for the credit. So just be very, very careful about that. Also, doctors, if any of you are going to be in Northern California on Saturday, September the 9th, I will be speaking at the California Dental Association Convention. I'm doing a a uh, three-hour uh, panel discussion and meet and greet, and we're talking about everything for new doctors and doctors that are looking at buying practices or what to do with their career. So that's going to actually this year be in at the San Jose Convention Center. Please come and see me. If you're looking for a dental CPA, uh, that is what we do. We do it very, very well. My email is a Wiederman at Eid Bailey. That's e i d e b a i l l y dot com, and my phone number is six five seven two seven nine three two four three. I also want to announce that on October eleventh through October thirteenth, Scott Haberman, who's a partner in Eid Bailey's Fort Collins, Colorado office, is going to be participating in the Dental Success Institute and Polaris Healthcare Partners' second annual Scaling from Clinician to CEO event, which is going to be held at the Phoenician Hotel, which is a beautiful place in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now, scaling practices, owning multiple practices is becoming more and more prevalent in dentistry. And we have lots of doctors who are doing it and they're opening new practices, buying practices. So this uh, this seminar is going to be a unique experience designed to teach aspiring dental entrepreneurs the necessary tools and pathways to build their own group practices. Attendees at this course will join a cast of industry experts for over 13 hours of exclusive educational content in the areas of financial reporting, tactical marketing and analytics, legal structure, uh, and acquiring or building practices, along with associate equity structures and much more. Now, they are offering a 10% discount to this seminar uh, if you use the code EB10 after August 1st. So again, October 11th to the 13th, the Dental Success Institute and Polaris Healthcare Partners hosting their second annual Scaling from Clinician to CEO event in Scottsdale, Arizona at the Phoenician Hotel. If you want more information, contact Scott Haberman at S Haberman, H A B E R M A N, at Eid Bailey, E I D E B A I L L Y dot com, or you can call him directly for more information at 970 999 8932. Be sure to check out our new Eyed Bailey podcast, Ebb and Flow, a business podcast providing inspired insight on issues and trends the middle market faces. Hear unique business stories, get answers to frequently asked and unasked questions, and understand business topics that matter to you. Available now on your favorite podcast platform. Okay, enough of that, folks. Let's talk about my friend Lois Banta. You are going to love this podcast. I mean, Lois is as good as it gets. She is the CEO and founder of a company called Healthcare Enterprises. Um, she does retreats to dental practices, both large and small across the country and internationally. Uh, she is one of the most highly sought out speakers in the country. I don't even have to make a list of all the meetings. I'm sure she's done them all. ADA, C uh, Chicago Dental Society, Hinman, she she's done them all. Um, for every member of the dental team, her, her seminars are a must. She's written monthly columns for Dental Practice Reports, Dr. By Cuspid, featured writer for the Dental Economic for Dental Economics, Australian Dental Journal. I was just in Australia. I should have picked up a copy of the Australian Dental Journal. Sorry, Lois, I didn't. Dentistry Today, AGD, plus other numerous journals. I have two of her books sitting right here next to me. One of her books is Secret Secrets to Practice Success, ten, Top 10 Management Tools. And the other book, which we're going to chat about a little bit today, uh, Secrets to Minimizing Open Time, a Toolkit for Dental Teams. My dear friend, Lois Banta, welcome to the Art of Dental Finance and Management. Thank you so much, Art. And again, thank you so much for uh, what you do for the dental industry, especially with this podcast. So I appreciate and admire you greatly. 
Well, the, it, it goes right back at you. I've known you for years and years and years. And uh, my legacy and your legacy are the fact that we have helped dentists to uh, have better careers, enjoy what they do, uh, and and hopefully, you know, financially be in better shape than they were before they met us. And uh, but but I I do want to start off by talking about uh, the speaking and consulting network. And you are uh, one of the founders. I mean, I I think it, maybe you'll tell a little history. Start with Linda, Linda Miles, and then you, and and now you and Ryan Vet. But um, I just joined the speaking and consulting network. And it was because uh, our uh, friend who's been on this podcast, uh, Deborah Engelhart Nash, uh, basically slapped me upside the head and said, Art, you need to join. And uh, I do what Deborah says. I think you and I both do what Deborah says, right? Pretty much. Oh, yeah, without fail. No problem. <laughs> no questions asked. Yeah. Yes. So I went to Nashville and, I, and it was also an attraction. The meeting was in Nashville. I'd never been to Nashville. And what a fun town that was. And uh, I'm not the biggest country music fan, but it was really fun. But I got to spend the first day with a lady named Lois Banta. That's you. And Lois ran the new members workshop. And oh, my gosh, what a game changer. What what an eloquent speaker. What I learned so much. So I want to thank you for that. But talk a little bit about the speaking and consulting network and what it's meant to you. So the Speaking Consulting Network was founded, as as you mentioned, by Linda Miles. And I was working full-time in a dental practice and really had hit a crossroads in my life about what do I do next? I'm not sure. Um, I I had a lot of information to share, and I thought maybe consulting was the next right step for me. So I called Linda Miles boldly and asked her for a job. (laughs) She she really was so gracious and supportive and said, Lois, she said, why aren't you starting your own company? And I said, I I don't know how to do that. And she said, well, fortunately for you, I just founded this organization called the Speaking Consulting Network uh, to teach people in our profession how to have it as a business. And I said, where do I sign? So in 1998, while still working full-time in a dental practice, I joined the organization of the Speaking Consulting Network. And uh, I I was at the second meeting she had ever had. She, She had founded it had the first meeting with 10 people and the second meeting had 14 people. And I was one of 14. I, it was literally drank by a fire hose. I couldn't believe the information that she was sharing and being so generous with. And she gave us a binder full of her own personal and professional materials on how to have this as a business. It was a three day meeting. I came home and I was on fire. I was so excited. So I, the first thing I did was I wrote down a five-year plan. Because that's what you do, right? You just write down what do you want to, where do you want to be in five years? That's so in five right. years, I wanted to have been able to quit my full time job and have a sustaining business that was actually making money. Well, two years later, I had to quit my full time job because I got too busy <laughs> and I had reached a fork in the road where I either still worked in a dental office full time or I have a speaking and consulting career. No, none of this I had planned to be a writer. That was a happy accident. And so I um, I went boldly into the speaking consulting world and I had my business. I had been to consulting for about 23 years. And a couple of years ago, sold the company and uh, refounded Healthcare Enterprises, which was my parent company, to have a, a masterclass training and retreat business. I really loved taking offices outside of their office environment and get out of their own way to really build a successful business. And that's always worked really, really well for me. In 2010, Linda Miles came to me one day and said, I'm, you know, I think I'm going to slow down a little bit. And I'm wondering if you want to buy SCN. And I didn't even blink and I didn't think one second about it and said, yes. So for 12 years, I owned SCN all by myself and grew it from 14 members to about 500 members yep. and had reached a point in my career I know I'm not going to live forever. Uh, It would be nice if there was a magic pill where we could just live forever and do this forever, but I know I can't. And I wanted SCN to live live on forever. So in 2021, I partnered with Ryan Vett, who um, invested as a majority owner of SCN, and I'm staying on as the CEO and teaching this new member day. And he, the reason I partnered with Ryan, he's a millennial and he's very forward thinking. 
He's, he's owned many companies in his career. He's a nice guy and he has a huge passion for the Speaking Consulting Network. So that was the right choice for me to partner with him. And he is really taking SCN into new and exciting directions, especially on the technology side where our website is much more interactive. And you mentioned New Member Day for SCN. So many people have a misconception that Speaking Consulting Network is for people who've never done it before. We're just starting out. Yes, we are an organization for those people, but we're also an organization, as you have just proven to me, for people who are well-established in their business who just want to uh, revamp their focus or nurture their focus or grow their business in the same or a different direction. And if you remember correctly, this year's SBN, half the class had already been well-established, which yes. caused me to flex uh, my new member day training and not just teaching people how to have it as a business, but teaching people how to maintain and grow the business with a good work-life balance. And that is now my focus. My SCN is an organization that my purpose, Ryan's purpose, is for you, our members, you, our members, to get as busy as you want to be and have that best balance forever. And if you get successful and busy, busy that's when SCN is successful. And Lois, so if there's a dentist listening to this podcast that says, you know, I really have something to say to the dental world on whatever topic it is, it might be management, it might be clinical. I mean, they could join SCN too, right? Absolutely. In fact, when I, uh, when I lecture, every single time I lecture without fail, someone comes up to talk to me about how can I do what you're doing? And uh, anybody can have this as a business, but I don't recommend having it as a business in a, in a fly by the seat of your pants department. So yes, anybody that wants to, that has, is nurturing in their thought, Hey, I, I think I want to teach others how to have a successful business. It could be a dentist, a hygienist, uh, a practice administrator, an office team member. It doesn't matter where you are in the dental world. If you've got knowledge and you're not going to share, this is the, then this is a very, very rewarding business. Not for sissies. You know, if it, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, right? Um, but that's where SCN really teaches that culture of uh, networking. It, it, network is in our name. So uh, we, we invite people to join our organization who have that same uh, philosophy of being able to share information. You, you drink from the well and you give back to the community and you give back to the dental community. And that's really what we're about. And the other thing too is, you join SCN, you can contact me personally, and I will mentor you. I have done that for so many of our members that they, I give them homework assignments before they even come to the annual conference that has new member day. I, I will teach everything I know before the conference. Don't, don't tease me now. All right. Don't, don't tease me because you, <laughs> I have your, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have your phone number. You better be careful. Yes. Well, listen, it, it, it was it was an amazing three days. We had over 100 people. We had we had just the the the, the and and then I want to get on to some of the stuff that, that you are just expert at. Um, but one of the coolest things they have is they have this speaking competition and mm -hmm. they had what, seven or eight or nine of our members get I up and they have to. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think and, there were seven of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 they get up and they're judged, and some of them, um, they were all amazing. They're, they're, it, it said that there had to be a a winner, but they were all amazing. And you get up and you see the breadth of the of the talent that's in this group. It, it's just off off the charts. But it was. I, I thank thank you and Deborah for inviting me and embracing me into your group, and I'm looking forward to. Um, uh, uh, the next meeting in Napa and then Austin and all that kind of stuff. So it'll be, it'll be really, really fun, but let, let's get into our topic, Lois, of um, you've written these books. One of them is secrets to minimizing open time, a toolkit for dental teams. I've read your books. Uh, they're a, they're a textbook and how to do this stuff. So let's start off. Why do patients cancel appointments? Wow. If I were going to give you the short answer, I would say 50% of the time it's the office's fault. Uh, it's okay. how it's it's nurturing the relationship with the patient, even down to how you confirm appointments. If you confirm the appointments and you hunt down the patient till they croak, chances are they're going to call you back and say, you know, I need to cancel. So there's 
setting the element of expectation when someone reserves their time with a dental practice and nurturing the relationship with the patient, you really walk a fine line in helping the patient feel cared for. The number one reason a patient will cancel is because they just didn't feel like it was necessary, or they didn't feel like it was important, or the practice didn't really pinpoint the need and want of the dental treatment that they are asking the patient to you know, adhere to and to accept the diagnosis. Our method of confirming um, has been unfortunate for years. That's why I wrote the book. I mean, the book is a, the first half of the book is a, is a read. It's, it's a story about how to minimize cancellations and open time. The second half of the book is literally a workshop. It is a step-by-step process for yep. how to build the tools uh, needed in your dental practice to minimize open time. Anybody can minimize open time. Nobody can eliminate open time. That's why you have to have backup plans. That's right. And the thing is, it is it is the dental team. And if you have somebody up front, I mean, this is important. If you have somebody up front that doesn't understand the importance that every time I have a hygiene slot that's not filled, I can never get that back, Right. I, I just can't. Right. And, it's, it's, and I call it temporary unemployment. <laughs> it's temporary unemployment. I when you don't that. have a butt to sleep, it is temporary unemployment. So with that said, and it's like anything else, and, and, and the theme of what we've done here on this podcast for five years is we talk about the leadership of the owner of the practice or the owners of the practice. And so, Lois, talk a little bit. And again, the problem is with with Lois and and other folks that I interview, this could be an eight-hour podcast. So I want to hit as much (laughs) as we can. And and you guys, we're going to talk in a little bit about how to get these books because I've read them and they're a how-to of of, of how to make your practice better. But how important is it? Talk about the importance, Lois, of the doctor owner of the practice uh, by making it a priority of the dental team. I mean, how does that work? Leadership is is one of the key elements to building a successful practice. And the thing that we both know, Art, is that, uh, you know, dental students don't get a lot of training in dental school on how to run a successful business, how to hire the right team, how to maintain a good team in the practice, and more importantly, how to lead the practice. The leadership isn't a top-down entity. It's a, you're going to lead, if you, if you set the bar in team appreciation, that leadership will happen very organically and nat- naturally. You have to check in with the team. You have to hire the right people. You have to put the right butts in the right seats. And then you have to nurture the environment. That means, uh, th- and I talk about this a lot in my lectures on how you have to have really good, finely tuned written system for every single element of running a successful practice and effective communication. And they have to marry that with really great leadership. And that means inspect what you expect, have morning huddles, hold regular team meetings, uh, get feedback from your patients and your team and each other on how to make sure you maintain a successful business. It is a business. You're not a not-for-profit agency. So in order to maintain that successful business, you can't just be a happy accident. You can't be a happy accident or, or eventually things will, will fail. No, you're, so, you're absolutely right. Go ahead. And well, so what I've learned along the way is when, when you, that's why, that's why the team retreats became such an important element of, of growing my business is that when you, when you can get everybody together and get out of your own way to really nurture what, what is going right in the practice and where are we challenged in the practice and really write it down and figure out the right path to make sure that everything is consistently a success, you're going to have a good, you're going to have a good successful practice. So let's take cancellations for a second. Um, number one reason a patient cancels is how you confirm the appointment. If you confirm the appointment and you remind people they have an appointment and then you ask the, for a call back to confirm the appointment, technically you're asking the patient to call back to cancel their appointment. They, they didn't have a thought that they might want to cancel until you left a message that said, if you need to cancel this appointment, we need 24 hours notice. Gee, I only need 24 hours notice to give my dentist to completely interrupt and sideline their whole entire life. Wow, that's great news for me, the patient. Instead, I have, that's why I say systems and verbal skills marry very well together. So I have a, a, 
recommended verbal skills when you're confirming an appointment, whether you're doing via email or text or voicemail, you call the patient just to inform them. We're calling to let you know that you have an appointment on our schedule on Monday at 8 a.m. And we're so excited to see you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then. Instead, what a lot of dental practices are saying is we're calling to remind you of your appointment at 8 o'clock on Monday. We need to hear from you today by 5 o'clock. Um, if you need to cancel, we need 24 hours notice. And it's all over written information. Oh, my text, gosh. Emails. It's just so unfortunate. It, for me, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard. And I had a practice locally that hired me one time that um, to come in. And, and I'm, I'm doing air quotes. You can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> train the scheduling team how to do the job right. So here comes Lois Banta in this office. I'm so excited to be there. How popular do you think I was? that the team was informed that a professional was going to come in and train them how to do their jobs. Right. I was not welcomed. I mean, you were, you were, you were sabotaged before you walked in the door. hundred percent. So uh, I realized that within literally 30 seconds of walking into the building and the ice cold air that I felt when I was greeted greeted by the scheduling, there were five scheduling coordinators here for three doctors and seven hygienists. So I, I thought, okay, I got to revamp and uh, inquire. So I talked to the team and I said, tell me, um, I was asked two questions. Tell me what you love about this part of your job and tell me what you find frustrating. Well, there wasn't a whole lot that they loved about it. They were 100% frustrated because they were instructed by the doctors to hunt the patient down to confirm that appointment or they were in trouble. So they would send a notice two weeks out. They'd send another notice one week out. They'd send another notice two days out. If they didn't confirm, they'd call the patient. Then they called them the day before. Then they called them the morning of and threatened that they were going to cancel the appointment if they didn't confirm. Their open percent, percentage of open time was about 35%. Oh, so 35% of the time, odd. patients were canceling or failing their appointment. And so I, re- I knew, I realized very quickly that their method of confirming was a little, uh, a little hinky. Right. So I put I pushed pause for the team and they shared a lot of more frustrations with me. And I said, I have a solve for this, but I need to go talk with the doctors first. And they happened to all be sitting downstairs eating lunch together. So I marched downstairs and I said, permission to tweak the confirmation, the method of confirmation with your team. I want to do a trial run on this for 30 days without any kind of influence from the doctors to be able to, um, cha- I'm going to challenge the team to, to confirm appointments a different way. And if in 30 days, it doesn't work, we can go back to the way things were. And they said, great. So I came back upstairs and I told the team, I said, I have permission from the doctors and we're going to change your method of confirming appointments. And we're going to try this for 30 days. I'm going to come back in 30 days and you're going to let me know whether or not this methodology worked. So what I had them do was confirm the appointment two days out And using the message of, we're letting you know that you're on our schedule on Monday. We're so excited to see you. Have a great day. For the risky patients in every practice, those doctors who are listening today, every practice has risky patients, patients who tend to cancel or fail on a moment's notice. And so I had them leave a message for those risky patients. Please give our office a call at this number because we have important information to share with you about your upcoming appointment. Well, of course, the patients called back as curiosity killed the cat. So they called back and the people they reached live and in person, the ones that wanted to cancel, I had them use another verbal skill of, um, first of all, trying to prevent the cancellation by saying, what can we do to help you keep this, this very important appointment? Nothing helped. And a lot of patients will say, no problem, I need to cancel and reschedule. You see, a patient doesn't mind inconveniencing the practice. But they themselves, they don't want to be inconvenienced. So the next verbal skill that I taught this team was, I'm so sorry you need to change this appointment. Let's go ahead and schedule a new appointment for you. The next two appointments I have available are six weeks from today or eight weeks from next Thursday. Which would you prefer? Well, of course, I got tons of feedback from the patient saying, what? You can't get me in for six weeks. And then wink, wink, Bob's your uncle. The team member would say, I know we are so busy. But if I get a rare change in my schedule, I'm happy to put you on our priority list and give you a call. 80% of those patients didn't cancel their appointment. Well, if it's going to take me that long to get back in, I'm just going to keep my original appointment. So fast forward, I came back 30 days later, and their percentage of open time went down to 5%. 
in 30 from days. 35 from 35 yes. percent so you're talking yes. about you said three doctors five uh five hygiene, seven hygiene. Hy- Seven hygiene. So this has got to be a, and again, you don't have to give me numbers, but multi-million dollar practice. So the amount oh. of dollars just from that 30-day exper- experiment, it's not an experiment because you know it works, but from that change that you elicited mm-hmm. to the team had to be hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars in revenues for this practice just in the 30 days. I mean, the yeah. hygiene appointments and the dentistry that came out mm-hmm. of that. I mean, just yeah. So yeah not let, let alone the the appointment that was saved, and then because the appointment was saved, the dentistry that was diagnosed and accepted would translate into the millions of dollars, of course, eventually. So, um, and I want to throw a statistic out there for every, let's say the um, I use this statistic in my seminars. I'm going to try and remember it from memory. If if the average hygiene appointment is worth two hundred dollars, and there's one cancellation, just one. For one hygienist per day, and to practice these patients over 200, 220 days, that's forty-four thousand dollars in lost production just from the missed appointment. Then, when you add to that one hour of unfilled open time on the doctor's side, worth just five hundred dollars, translates to another hundred and ten thousand dollars in potential lost production. So, if you did nothing else in your practice but reduce one hour of open time on hygiene and one hour of open time on operative, you, your increase in your bottom line can be over $150,000. Just just by, if they don't have to do anything else. They don't have to raise their fees. They don't have to change their hours. They don't have to do anything else. And, and there's a couple, okay, first of all, you better be careful because I'm going to start thinking about offering you a job at our accounting firm so you, with all the numbers <laughs> you're throwing out here. But, um, but I mean, and you think about, Lois, that $150,000 has virtually no overhead associated to it. Uh, maybe Zero. six, maybe, well, yeah. And, and it all drops to the bottom line. And so that, that's what, that's what we need to do. And so doctors, this book, and I want Lois, I want to take a minute and kind of have you talk about the books you've written and, and then we're going to get into retreats because the retreat is, is, is your, that's your, uh, that's your wheelhouse among other wheelhouses. So, um, Talk a little bit. You you wrote, you've written, and I don't know if you've written more. I've got Secrets to Practice Success, Top 10 Management mm-hmm. Tools. I actually read this book cover to cover on the airplane from Nashville back to Orange County. And it was just, I, I think I'm going to, I need to read it again. Um, <laughs> and then this book, Secrets to Minimizing Open Time, a Toolkit for Dental Teams. So talk a little bit about the books you've written and 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 some of the work you do that will kind of lead us into what you know? What what's a good retreat? So talk about kind of what you're doing these days, and and then we'll give the doctors an opportunity to get a hold of you if they want to, uh, if, if they want to pick your brain. Well, uh, so I've written those two books. I have a third book coming out hopefully by the end of the year, and it's the secrets to effective communication: how to say anything the right way. I and love it. It's not. Yeah, it's not what you say in a dental practice; it's how you deliver the message and how you encourage. Uh, cross-communication in the office, especially with patients. Patients, and and that's why I focused so heavily on scheduling in this second book, patients uh, want what you have to offer, but you have to identify what they want. We are really good in dentistry about identifying what they need, but we have to help the patient identify what they want and don't want in their mouth first before we can then deliver the here's what you need to make sure we improve that for you. The reason I started uh, masterclass training and retreats is, and the masterclass training is also outside of the in-office environment. If you do training in an office, what I've discovered is there are natural interruptions, the phone ringing, the FedEx delivering a package, the patient knocking on the window, hey, I saw birds in the parking lot, aren't you, are you open? And so the general distractions are eliminated when you go outside of your physical space. I also have uh, discovered that total team bonding, doctors and teams coming together, happens much more organically when you take them outside their natural professional work environment. So I've taken teams, uh, and I've also done these publicly. I've gone to Dublin, Ireland, and uh, Tuscany, Italy, where we incorporate some sort of activity in those countries. Uh, In Tuscany, it was a cooking class. In Dublin, Ireland, it was a tour of the Baileys farms where we met the farmers that owned the cows that made the milk that made the Baileys. And we come back the second day and we discuss what about those experiences can translate very well to how to grow a successful business. And always 
something about that experience comes back to the cooking class was all about team building and how to work together as a team. We can't make this whole meal together if we're just working separately. We have to work, come together and, and plan this together. So I do the same thing in private retreats on a much smaller scale. I've gone to resorts. I've gone to cabins. I've gone to cities that have these amazing hotels and we'll do the retreat right inside the hotel and then do a scavenger hunt outside the hotel to uh, work on whatever topic is their topic of choice. The, the masterclass training has morphed into practices that are in network with too many insurance plans. And I know that lightning bolts are going to strike me dead someday and an insurance company is going to be the. No, no, you and I are on the same page. But what frustrates me about in network plans isn't the in network plan. It's how it's managed. It's, it's the implication that the long term effects on their bottom line when they take their eye off the ball and they focus only on in-network plans instead of the patient relationship. So I have really on accident, a a part of my masterclass training has been teaching practices how to change their relationship with some of these in-network plans and take the power back in their practice. But most importantly, how to talk to patients about why they're not uh, a preferred provider on this plan. They can still take the insurance, insurance can still pay the practice on most of these plans, but they're, they're, working independently of that relationship with the insurance company and, and focusing more, more focus on the patient doctor relationship. And, and I'm going to make it real simple, Lois, because I am required by law to do numbers on this podcast. Um, <laughs> the average write-off on a PPO plan is 38 to 42%. If your profit mm-hmm. margin doctor is 30 to 35 or 32 to 38%, do the math. You might as well just hand money to the patients as they walk out the door. And we're not going to go into that whole discussion, but Lois and I are very much like-minded on changing your relationship with insurance. And that's, uh, if you go into my library, if we're approaching 200 podcasts, uh, we've talked about that at length. So uh, Lois, how, how I want to let people know, how do they get a hold of you? We're going to talk here about the retreats in a second. They want to. They want to talk to you about you know retreats. They want to talk to you about getting your books. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Is there a website, phone number, email? Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us how to get a hold of you. Yeah. So my website is uh, www.ljbseminars.com. You can reach out to me through my website. It'll reach me personally. You can also go to my online store on my website if you're interested in purchasing my two books. In December, I'm getting ready to to um, record master class training online. So somebody can, maybe the it's not in their budget to hire me personally to come into their practice, but they still need a little tweaking and a little help. They can purchase my online courses after um, in 2024, those courses will be finalized. Uh, you can also email me at uh, Lois, L-O-I-S dot Banta, B-A-N-T-A 57 at gmail.com. You can call me personally at 816 223 Three five two nine. I'm happy to have a complimentary introductory conversation with anyone that's going through any kind of struggle in their dental practice to find out how we could be a good fit. Folks, I probably get five solicitations a week of people who want to be on my podcast. I'm very, very, very picky, as you know. Um, take advantage of Lois and what she has to offer. And I don't do I don't do commercials for anybody. I don't get anything for this other than the satisfaction to know that. When you engage with the people that we bring on to this podcast, your practice will be better. Your life will be better. Bottom line. I mean, her books are, and again, this is not a book where you have to, you know, this is not like a thousand page worn piece. No. Uh, I've got Secrets to Practice Success is 57, yeah. 57 pages. And I'm, I'm, of I'm my top 10 management tools. I kept right. it short and smooth. And minimizing open time, secrets to minimizing open time is 91 pages and they're easy reads on a, you know, if you're going from coast to coast or something, it's an easy read, it's easy stuff. And in the secrets book, what I loved is there's tons of actual verbal skill advice. This is how you do this. This is how, and and she actually gives you the scripts and the tools. So it's very cool. Let's get Lois, because again, we're going to be here for two days. Let's get into a, a retreat. Talk about the specifics of a retreat. All right. First of all, I, I'm I'm guessing that you believe that all dental offices should hold retreats, right? I couldn't agree more. Especially okay. 
as you're thinking about growing your practice for the for the next year. I, um, I'm a firm believer in plan ahead. And, and, and that, the reason I'm so excited to be on your podcast, Art, is, is on the accounting uh, angle. I'm not an accountant. I don't play one on t- TV. <laughs> I, love, I love numbers. But I love the storytelling part of numbers and then partnering with accounting firms to make sure that those numbers are tracked in the right way for the right purpose, right? So a retreat gets, um, a a typical retreat would be two days. Uh, And and you're not, it's not eight hours a day every day. There is uh, maybe a four hour session, uh, lunch, and then a breakout session in the afternoon or uh, a scavenger hunt, so to speak. The next day is going to be recap of the first day and strategic planning to how do we set these plans in motion. So creating action plans for maybe the practices having trouble filling their schedule or they're having trouble uh, putting the money in the bank or maybe they're in network with too many plans or maybe they're just having trouble getting along as a team, right? Sometimes that it's just a matter of finding a way to be able to relate to each other professionally and personally so that we can all have a happy work environment. Oh, absolutely. So uh, just kind of getting the specifics down here, you, you said two days is generally how, how long you like to have a retreat, right? Yeah, two days. That's okay, usually and, and, like a Friday, Saturday. And then you said a hotel or a resort. Tuscany, mm-hmm. I spent my, my, my wife, Lynn, and I have been married. Uh, we just celebrated 38 years and um, I got to meet your wonderful husband at SCN. He's 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 a hoot. He's great. And so anyway, oh yeah, he's golden. And and so anyway, we spent our 25th wedding anniversary doing a bicycling trip through Tuscany and the sunflowers. And oh, oh my God, mm-hmm. that's a great place. So um, uh, uh, so we're talking two days, uh, a hotel. I mean, you, you let the doctor choose where they want to hold it, yeah. right? Okay. So I, 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 the rules are the doctor chooses the location and the topic, and I build the retreat that will give them the best bang for their buck. So, And typically, the return on that investment is realized within 30 to 90 days, depending upon what uh, projects we're working on. And what, how often do you do? You like to do it once a year, once every two years? Usually a retreat would be once a year. Um, and the, the focus of the retreat, if you're doing them once a year, part of that focus has to be strategic planning for how you want to grow your business. The other half of the retreat will be something related to team building, leadership, or systems. So you said the doctor sets the agenda. What if the doctor comes to you, which I suspect has happened more than once, and says, well, gee, Lois, that's kind of what I got you for. What, what, what are we talking about? So how, how do we, how do we set an agenda? What types of, do you, do you say like, I mean, I know there's some fun involved. You can't just put people in a room for eight straight hours and then give them right. a cookie in the middle and that's it. Right. You can't do that. Right. So how, how no. do you, I'm assuming you help the doctor set the agenda, right? I help the doctor set the agenda. That's where that complimentary uh, call comes in. It's, it's a strategic planning session with me personally. So I interview them based on where they feel their trouble points are. I ask them what what they love about their practice and also what frustrates them about their practice. And then I make suggestions based on that feedback on what that retreat um, could be focused on. And then ultimately, they're the decision maker to say, yes, I want to focus on this or I want to focus on this and this. And and you tell them that's realistic. So what's interesting, I want to ask you this, because you and I both know that there are lots of dentists out there who just don't have, they're great doctors, maybe they're good leaders, maybe they're great in verbal skills, but they don't have the right team. I'm assuming that when you take a team out for a retreat, you find out really quickly who's engaged and who cares and who is just, as we call them, chair fillers. Talk about that for a minute. Oh, I couldn't agree more. In fact, that is the good testing ground for when they're not, you have a team that wants to be fully engaged or a team that's just collecting a paycheck. And so one of the things I recommend in the hiring process is to put a little um, blurb in there about occasionally we do outside the office retreats. Um, Please tell me yes or no that you would be willing to participate in an outside the office out of town retreat. And then you will know whether or not you're hiring the right butt for the right seat. 
So in the retreat, let's talk about the the kind of the, the details. Let, let's pick pick a topic, Lois. What let's say we're starting the retreat retreat. First of all, do you do it on a weekend? Do you take do you shut the office down for two days and do it during the week? What's your what's your goal on that one? I my preference is typically like a Friday, Saturday, or a Thursday, Friday, towards the end of the week. Um, retreat. Now, sometimes the doctors will say, oh, my team's not going to want to leave town. No problem. I will choose a hotel that has a great meeting room facility, and we will do our retreat in town where they will drive in for the retreat in town. And then we will focus on whatever topic they feel um, needs focused on the most. I will get a good sense, by the way, based on my interview with the doctor, what the focus should be. I will get a good sense. So typically it's it stems around communication and leadership. And then, uh, for instance, I interviewed a doctor just last week who was explaining to me, it, it started with a conversation, I need help with scheduling and collection. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. There's a conversation that's going to go a little deeper here. And so I started asking her questions. I said, just tell me about your open time in the practice. She said, well, she said, I'm having trouble keeping my schedule full. We have cancellations left and right. And that wasn't always the case, Lois. We used to have a really full schedule. I was booked out two weeks. And suddenly, I don't have enough money going in my bank account. And then I realized statements weren't being sent. And I said, so, doctor, tell me uh, how how your team, uh, your administrative team has been in place. Do you have new team members? Do you have missing team members? Do you have a revolving door? And she said, Lois, I have a revolving door. And that peeled away the layers. And so my recommendation to her was the first thing was virtual coaching to get her some team members that want to stay fully engaged in the practice, the hiring process, the interviewing process. Deborah Nash and I have had many conversations about effective hiring techniques and then building the systems and protocols in the practice so that the administrative team has good guidance of how to follow. And then it came out in the conversation. She doesn't feel like a very effective leader and she wasn't leading effectively. And she said, I have no idea how to lead my team. And so when I bring something to their attention, it feels like I'm yelling at the team and then they quit. I said, okay, now that's a leadership discussion. So as we were having our complimentary conversation, I was building the plans for the retreat and the masterclass training while we were talking and revealing to her in that moment where the focus should be. She knew, she just didn't know how to verbalize it. Well, and then I'm assuming that she's a little more comfortable with it now. Yes, a lot more comfortable with it right now. So now she's in the process of, after we hung up, the two team members came to her and they're quitting. So that's two of the three administrative team members. So we backed up our bus and I said, let's do some virtual coaching first, get you comfortable with hiring the right people, and then let's do a retreat. And now she feels like she has a focus. So and that I, is I, just from the oh, yeah. complimentary discussion. There, oh. There's so much that gets revealed during that complimentary discussion that presents the opportunity for really great and effective and meaningful training. You know, Lowe's, I, I, what I did as a CPA, I ran my own CPA firm for 33 years before I merged it with a large local firm in Orange County. And now we're part of I'd Bailey. I always had the attitude I will hire attitude and I can teach skills. You can't, you can't teach attitude, right? At 100%. I also say, um, hire slow and fire fast. So if <laughs> and, somebody and, has a yeah good attitude, I will hire I will hire for a positive attitude every single time I've hired. I've encouraged Dennis to hire more team members for the admin side with no dental experience, as long as they have really good hiring strategies, such as hire, train, trust. Right. So you hire, you give them this 90 days training and orientation period to acclimate, you give them the right tools to be successful, and then you revisit how they're doing. But if you hire somebody, if you, you go and you do a retreat and you've got um, someone at the front desk uh, whose life is in shambles and they're not happy people. I mean, we have to hire happy people in dental offices, don't we? Mm hmm. I agree. And I also will tell you that not everybody should start with a retreat. If they have a very um, chaotic environment, it's really best to start with masterclass training and not do the retreat first. The retreat is really for people who have reached a certain level where they want to get to that next 
step, not for people who are in chaos. Masterclass training is the uh, scope that you want to focus on for that. Now, so you, you do you set goals with the doctor for the retreat? In other words, the doctor is going to say, okay, you're taking me for two days. Um, and, and, and so what are your goals generally at the end of the day, when the retreat is over, what do you want to see happen? What, what do you want to see? So at the end of the retreat, I want to have action plans filled out, decided on people taking responsibility for and identifying how we're going to celebrate when we got these things done. So at the end of the retreat, I want the client to walk away with meaningful action plans that they can easily start to implement the minute they get back to work. Otherwise, it's just a vacation. Right. No, <laughs> expensive no, which, one, too. Which, 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 yeah, that's an expensive one. But, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure, if, Lois, that you see in these retreats, like we said earlier, you find out who the real good players are and the ones who sit there with their arms folded and are not interested. And are there times where you'll say to the doctor, doctor, we've just spent two days together and you've got to get rid of person A and person B or your practice isn't going anywhere. Have you done that? Well, in in a manner of speaking, I've not say you've got to get rid of this person. I do say you have to sit down with this person and have a meaningful discussion with them on how on board they are with moving forward with these plans. Right. And if they're 100 percent on board, that's a teachable moment. If that if they're about 70 percent of the way, then it's time to give them their wings and find somebody who wants the job. But I don't recommend they fire someone. I recommend they give them an opportunity to grow or an opportunity to find another job. Yeah. And and, and the thing is, doctors that I, I've talked to you about is when you go to the big dental conventions, you go to Hinman, you go to Dallas, you go to Yankee, you go to CDA, you know, don't go to a class on how to make a crown. You know how to do that. Go to a class on how to talk to your patients and how to lead your team. It's not exciting. It's not sexy, but it's so, I mean, Lois, that's, that's what you've taught for 30 years to, to, to hundreds yeah. and hundreds of dental offices. Is 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 and, and I don't think that leadership, while there's books on it and, um, you know, there are best-selling books on it and but, but I don't think that leadership is rocket science, and I don't mean to downgrade it. It, it, it. Isn't it a little also, Lois, about being a little vulnerable? When I used to talk to my team, and I went to a, uh, a, a retreat in New York State about 10 years ago when something wasn't feeling right for me, and I came back and uh, they talked about this kind of stuff. And I said, guys, isn't it important, like, asking for your help? You know, doctors, uh, team, I don't know all the answers. I have a vision. I'm the leader, but I need your help. Isn't asking for the team's help go a long way in getting them to do what you want them to do? It's 90% of the success. It's 90% of the success. You've got to, you've got to create an environment where there's trust and, uh, trust accountability and the doctor has to say, I need your help. I can't do this alone. I think that's a very healthy way to say it. Yeah. They don't, they don't have all the answers and you know, my team and my CPA practice Lois for 33 years, I didn't make any major decisions without their input. I had three people that were, I've talked about them on this podcast, uh, um, you know, one of them was my, my dear friend and partner, Pam Chamberlain. We didn't make any dis- major decisions without talking about it. I mean, I ultimately made the final decision, but 98% of the time, the decision was kind of along the lines of what they were suggesting. And most of the times they were right and stuff. Yeah. So let, let's put a bow on, on the, the conversation about the retreats. We should do them maybe once a year outside, um, and uh, anything else about the retreats that you do that you want to talk about? So, so the, for the retreats, yes, outside the office at a, a location that's conducive to a really great learning and a fun, positive environment and to, to set yourself up for getting out of your own way. However, there is a however there. If you have a chaotic, uh, upset environment, a retreat probably isn't your first step. So make right. sure that you that when you're considering doing something like this, it's, uh, it's, it, you have, it has to feel meaningful and it has to feel meaningful for the entire team. I worked for a guy 
who took us on a seven day cruise to do a retreat. He took us to a cabin and I saw how meaningful that was, but I also saw the effects when the team was in chaos, how uh, uh, frustrating it was. And so I would love to have had some sort of uh, training session first so that we could figure out how this process works so that when we get together offsite, it's much more positive and meaningful. Because you don't want to go away for two days and spend the money it takes to do what you do and the cost of the wherever you're going to take them. And then it turns into a two day uh, complaint session, which uh, yeah. that, that's not that's not healthy. So that's not fun for anyone. <laughs> no, it is not fun. Well, you are golden. I swear. I wish I could do this for like 10 hours with you on the phone. I know I'll see you at all the SCN meetings. And uh, are you speaking? Uh, yeah, this this podcast is going to come out uh uh, I believe August 26th. So, uh, are oh. you speaking anywhere? Um, and, and we get, you know, we get people from all over the country. Uh, between August and December, are you speaking anywhere? Where, I'm sure you are. Uh, where are you speaking? Um, are you, you have well, any places? The next conference I'm speaking at is the, for the ADOM meeting, the American Association of Dental Office Management in Orlando, Florida. The uh -huh. huge 5,000 uh, person attendee meeting. So I'm speaking twice there, one on my scheduling session and once on my on leadership and retreats, but in, in, interestingly enough. I'm also speaking um, at the Greater New York meeting in December, and I will be speaking on my top 10 management tools and my communication lecture. So those are my two main meetings coming up this year, and I'm very excited about presenting. So let, let's let's put a bow on this, Lois, and let's again tell people how they can get a hold of you. Is your is your lecture schedule on your website? It should be on my website. I'm actually just getting ready to update it, but my lecture schedule should be on my website. Yes, but they can okay. uh, reach out to me through my um, through my website at ljbseminars.com, and that's the best way for uh, kind of a one-stop shopping. You can communicate with me. You can go to my store. It's a really great way to connect with me is uh, just by remembering ljbseminars.com. And if you go back to Italy to do another one of these uh, retreats, you had best take me with you. I love Italy as my favorite place on the planet. Um, one of those places I said I could literally live in Tuscany. Oh. I, I absolutely love it. It was funny when I got home from Italy, uh, it, you know, it, it was it was three in the morning, but it felt like three in the afternoon. And we turned on the TV because we couldn't go to sleep. And what comes on under the Tuscan sun with Diane Lane? I mean, you can't beat that, right? <laughs> One so, of my favorite movies. <laughs> a great movie. So uh, Lois Banta, uh, her books are called Secrets to Minimizing Open Time, a Toolkit for Dental Teams and Secrets to Practice Success, Top 10 Management Tools. She's coming out with, a, you said, Masterclass in December? Uh, yes, online Masterclass series. I'm recording it in December, so it should be available in 2024. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is just golden, golden stuff. And if your team, you feel like you've got a good team, folks, and maybe you just want to take that next step to take your practice to the next level, and, and you want to have some fun with your team and you got great relationships with them, consider, uh, you know, consider a retreat with Lois. Uh, and, and again, like I told you, I don't I don't get anything for publicizing this other than the fact that I know that if you work with the folks that come onto my podcast, like Lois Banta, uh, your practices will be better. You will make more money. You will have more enjoyment of your practice. So, Lois, uh, hang on with me as I take this podcast out and. Um, uh, folks, again, thank you for the honor and the privilege of your time. I am just so, so honored to do this podcast. We get emails all the time from people that say thank you for what you're doing. I get people at the dental convention. I listen to your podcast. And uh, so you know, th this is why, because then I can have wonderful, wonderful people come on and give you great, great information. Uh, again, please go to our partner, Decisions in Dentistry magazine, www.decisionsindentistry.com. Uh, 140 great continuing education courses at a very, very reasonable price. And uh, be sure if you need a dental CPA, you're having issues on uh, transitions, you're having issues on partnerships, you're having issues on taxes or accounting, you get unwanted surprises, your CPA does not return your phone calls. The number one reason that CPAs um, get new clients are that the old CPA does not return a phone call and does not communicate. 
So uh, my phone number is, uh, my direct line where it comes right to my computer is 657-279-3243. And if I am not in one of my happy places, which is either on a golf course, on a fly fishing stream, or in front of this microphone like I am right now, you'll get me on my computer or email me at a Wiederman, W-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N, at Eid Bailey, E-I-D-E-B-A-I-L-L-Y.com. Anyway, folks, thank you very, very much for the honor and privilege of your time again. And it was wonderful to do this podcast with Lois Banta. And uh, that was uh, that will about do it for this episode of The Art of Dental Finance and Management with Art Wiederman CPA. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Art of Dental Finance and Management podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode. The Art of Dental Finance and Management podcast is produced by Ide Bailey in partnership with Art Wiederman, CPA, Decisions in Dentistry Magazine, and the Academy of Dental CPAs. For audience questions and feedback, email Art Wiederman, awiederman at idebailey.com. That's A-W-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N at E-I-D-E-B-A-I-L-L-Y.com. Or you may call Art at 657-279-3243.